It's time to open mail, but I've been working on a project, so this is where it comes in useful to use those smaller cutting mats so I can just carry this stuff away temporarily. I'm going to use this different colored knife with the sharper blade today. According to the label, 10 pieces of TXB0108, 10 pieces of TXS0108. These are small surface mount chips. They are each eight channel bi-directional level shifters and auto direction sensing. So you just put them there and you can maybe go from 3.3 volts to 5 volts on eight channels. And automatically when something is transmitting on it or receiving on it, it will take care of everything and just allow a smooth, hopefully, level shift. I've got one of each kind, TXS versus TXB, because they are slightly different. I think the TXB is intended for push-pull logic interfacing, and TXS can be push-pull or open drain. So I'm wondering if I can use that to do things like level shift SPI as well as open drain I squared C between something like a 3.3 volt ESP and some other 5 volt circuitry. Then I've got several of these multi-package choice delivery things. Lately, I'm finding on AliExpress, at least for me, it seems better to only order things that have choice delivery as an option, not those standalone orders where you pay shipping. I'm still able to get choice deliveries reliably in around 10 days, but when I order non-choice things. Ever since six or seven months ago, I have not received a single shipment. They get maybe as far as customs and then tracking shows no updates. What? Where's the item? Oh, that's weird. So there's no tracking updates and then I gotta wait maybe a couple of months until AliExpress automatically says the shipment is complete and then I have a chance to file a claim requesting a refund. So if I need a part for a project soon and it's not choice delivery and it goes missing, I've got to wait a couple of months to get started filing a claim and then AliExpress puts a 30-day countdown timer on it so I gotta wait 30 days to see what they're gonna do and then they may give me the refund finally after a total of three months plus the couple of weeks it took to realize it's going missing. But sometimes they'll do yet another countdown. It might be just 24 hours, it might be another 10 days, where they just say it's still in transit. So right now I'm not ordering anything else unless it's choice, and I'm still waiting on a couple of refunds. MCP23S17 I ordered just one of these 16-channel GPIO expanders SPI format because I'm going to need multiple, maybe, for upcoming projects. And I thought I had some of these, can't find them, so I ordered at least one to get going for now. But then I found my tube of maybe five of them, so eventually they'll all get used up. And some more of these eight-channel LED modules, like the ones I already got. These need to be snapped apart to make individual boards, but these are red common cathode as a complement to the blue common cathode I already got. So if I want two different colors as indicators on a breadboard, I can use this. So I'll break those apart later. Then I got a bunch of male and female 2x10 connectors, right angle. So those are board mount, and then they can plug into each other. So when mating these together, because this one has so much extra room on left and right, you do have to line it up to get started, but then it will just plug in. So I just needed something for now. So I'm going to have one board and multiple plug-in options. So that's coming up hopefully within the next couple of months. Another choice delivery, of course, so I can't remember now because I got so many choice deliveries. I don't know exactly what's in each of them anymore. E squared prom memory module I squared C interface AT24CO2 
I kind of remember ordering a bunch of these. I think it was because they popped up in one of those extra sales, like buy three of them and you can ship it under choice and the cost is lower than it usually is. So we got power ground, I squared C, AT24CXX, so they can put different size devices on the same board. 24C256. So I figured if those are a good price at the time, I might as well order. I think I should just open a bunch of this stuff and then go through it. It's too difficult. So some potentiometer knobs, which have the set screw to hold it on. So they come with a little wrench. So that's for these potentiometers that are smooth. So I got more inventory. Apparently there's four different boards. So there's that memory chip module, two different types of push button breakout boards. I've been doing a lot of things with push buttons lately. So having multiple options to get buttons quickly accessible and the four buttons, these have taller, easier to get at actuators. The buttons on the eight channel one, it almost feels like they are recessed. It's a little harder to get at, but there's more buttons available. So just something useful to have. It looks like I have three of these little generic LDO regulator boards, DC jack for power in and a switch, and a 3.3 and 5 volt regulator with header pins. So quick access, especially if say I'm using 9 volts already, and I also need a digital voltage supply, I can just get one of these and throw it beside a breadboard. Another choice delivery. And I see some shipping labels, so I'm going to black those out. Now I think I remember, these look like JST, at least, style connector crimp pins. So there must be male and female JST style connector housings. Yep. Yeah, these are the board side. So I have five pin and nine pin right angle board connectors and the corresponding female plugs to go in to the side of a PCB and that's related to the boards that are going to plug into each other. They're also going to have JST style connectors that you can plug a cable into. So it's a good thing all these parts came within a week of each other so I can put them all to use. And now I need to clear more space again because I found another couple of relatively low cost guitar effect pedals on AliExpress. And at the time, I think they were on sale, even though they're already usually cheap. So I think these are both delays. One's a classic delay, one's elemental. So on the elemental, we have time, a bunch of different settings for different styles of the effect. So that would be sort of like a delay time. And then feedback is how much signal gets fed back to the input so it can keep going instead of fading out quicker. Mix is probably the original sound in combination with the affected sound. So how prominent is this effect? Mod, I'm not sure. And parameter, on the back there's a table. So in different modes, the parameter will control different aspects of whatever effect effect setting you're on. Classic delay, we have a level control, looks like a high and a low EQ, delay time and feedback again, and mix. So combination of original signal with the affected signal. More straightforward to use. I just want to quickly see if they work. I noticed the green classic delay needs a higher current power supply. I tried one and the light would come on, but the sound would just pass through, no effect on it. I switched it around until I got a higher current output on here and it suddenly would work. So with no delay on...
works. So I got a lot of stuff as usual, specifically some connectors for near future PCBs, ongoing breadboarding accessories, and of course, research and development purchases. Now I have to figure out how to get all of this stuff put away so I can bring that other project back over here and work on it. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make all this possible.